mayor of Barcelona, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today at the open ceremony of the Barcelona Knowledge Hub, the Southern European Mediterranean Office of the Academia Europea. We celebrate it with a very important event, the first Diputatio of the 21st century, entitled Social and State of the Art Medicine. When I became president of Academia Europea five years ago, it became evident to me and to my board that the recruitment of new members had slowed down and that the activity of the Academy was slow and mostly occurred in the northwestern parts of Europe. So we have established two regional offices or hubs in addition to the main office in London. One last year in Wroclaw in Poland with special responsibility for the Eastern European region and now the Knowledge Hub here in Barcelona, with special responsibility not only for Catalonia or even Spain, but for the whole Southern European and Mediterranean region, going from Portugal in the West to the Middle East. A large majority of the money that the world spends on medicine, about one trillion dollars every year, a large majority of that money does not go back into the manufacture of medicine or the research and development of new medicines. Most of that money actually goes for litigation, for advertising, and other uh, wasteful activities that do not really benefit either patients or even the pharmaceutical innovators and industry. Some examples of how we are changing this landscape, I may mention genomic medicine, the ENCODE project that tell, told us about the importance of the non-coding DNA in our health and in our way of seeing nature, synthetic biology that is creating new life. It's creating new life from chemicals. Or the robots that will probably be helping us in the near future. To support feasibility and the viability of the HIF-based system, um, we should need to measure performance. Um, are there any successful role models? Can you tell us more about how, how the performance is being, is being measured? Yes, of course. Uh, so there are two questions here. One is, what is the metric in terms of which we measure performance? And the second is, how do we apply that metric in the real world? How do we get the needed empirical data? How would we do it empirically? Obviously, we could not follow each patient who takes a particular medicine. That would be much too expensive. But we could use random sampling. So just like you have exit polls after elections where you ask people, how did you vote? And when you ask 2,000 people, you can predict how the entire city of Barcelona has voted. And similarly, you can do it by following up randomly selected patients. You can select them by embedding microchips into uh, randomly selected packages of drugs, or you can select them by geographical area. I think that this is, also, this is very important, and I think that it's very important that we start including already in the clinical trials measurements of quality of life. Many clinical trials do not incorporate in their design measures, good measures of quality of life. And that I think that at the end of the day, it's not that you simply restore one condition, it's also that the life of this patient gets better. The problem that I see in, in, in all this field is also that in many cases, the diagnoses are very difficult. There is a huge variability across patients, and this can to some extent bias also the results of the evaluations. Okay, here we have another question for Professor Poge from Parvati Nair from the United Nations University in Barcelona. It says, given that poverty is clearly linked to ill health, how does the Health Infant Fund, Infant Fund address the underlying problem of structures that place the profit of pharmaceutical industries over their ethical or social obligations? Uh, yeah, it it doesn't really address that problem in the sense that it makes pharmaceutical companies morally motivated. So the Health Impact Fund is in that regard quite modest, 
and says that the real problem or the problem of mischanneled innovation can be solved even while pharmaceutical companies remain focused on profits. So the real problem that I'm trying to solve with the Health Impact Fund is the problem that the rules that we have placed the pharmaceutical companies under are rules that systematically cause their immoral behavior. So misregulation can drive misconduct. And this is not only true in pharmaceutical industry, it's also true for many other aspects. For example, in research, we have heard several cases of scientific misconduct driven by the model of evaluating science and driven by the way we mark up some science as excellence without boosting excellence in science from bottom up. This marvelous setting reminds me of what, what happened in medieval times to, to big, bring the Renaissance about. The Renaissance, which was an intellectual revolution, and it happened through disputatio of this kind. So thank you all so much for your inspiration.